We've all done things in life where we wanted to redo. So the message, the sermon that I gave last week, when we finished, we left the construction site, and I just didn't feel right. I felt like I was supposed to say something more. I felt like I had left something out. And so it bugged me, and I had a whole other message prepared, and so we'll hear that next week. But I'm going to redo last week, and I'm going to focus on something else. And, and, and I think that this is common when you're looking at this parable. The reason I say that is because two people recorded Jesus sharing this parable, this story. One of them was Matthew. We looked at what he shared last week. But the other one was Luke. And we know that Luke's came later. And Luke, I'm going to approach it the way Luke did. Luke was a little more intense. He was a little bit more in your face. So that's, that's where we're going. I'm going to keep it short because, let's face it, it's a redo. I don't want to repeat everything we said last week. But the key elements that I want to share, that I don't think I shared clearly enough, one of them is this. When Jesus is talking about these two men, and he says that they built these two different houses on a different foundation, we can hear that and we can think immediately, oh, I know what you're talking about. You're talking about someone that isn't a Christian, someone that doesn't know what Jesus taught. No. He's got all of these people following him around. He's on this hillside. He sits down and he has everyone around him and he gives them all the message. He gives them all the teaching, all of them the instruction. And then he says, of you that are here, some of you are going to do what I said and some of you aren't. And the difference will be like someone that builds their house on the sand versus someone that builds it on the rock. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I tell you? Everyone who comes to me and hears my words and does them, I will show you what he is like. He's like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. And when a flood arose, the stream broke against that house and could not shake it because it had been well built. But the one who hears and does not do them is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. When the streams broke against it, immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. And so Luke's approach here is the approach that I want to take with a few minutes that we have left. He's approaching this and saying, listen, all of you that are hearing this sermon, all of you that are hearing Jesus, you're approaching it as teaching instead of instruction. You're approaching it as suggestions and not commandments. You're, you're deciding what you want to keep and what you want to get rid of. And so I love that phrase. Why aren't you doing what I'm telling you to do? Luke makes sure to keep that in there because it blows his mind. Why are you hearing this, but you're not doing it? And he's gone through this entire Sermon on the Mount, giving this teaching. And as we look at it in our time here today, in this culture, at this time in history, we're not doing what he says. For example, one of the things he says is never call someone a fool. It's like murder. And yet, all the time, we see Christians, people that say they're following Jesus, calling people all kinds of names, looking down upon them, condescending, attacking verbally, talking behind their back. No, no. Why don't you do what I say? We justify it. Well, you don't understand because they're not honoring God, so I'm going to talk poorly about them. No, you don't get to choose. This isn't just teaching. This is instruction. You can't serve, Jesus says, me and money. And yet we make so many decisions based on money. I'm going to take this job because of the pay. I'm going to move here because of the pay. I'm going to vote for this person because I'm going to vote with my wallet. We make all of these decisions based on things, on money, 
on numbers, on Excel sheets. Why don't you do what I say, Jesus says. The thing that covers all of the commandments, all of the teaching, all of the instruction, Jesus says, love God while your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And he goes on to say, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. We need to carry that with us throughout the day. Now, we're going to make mistakes in all of these, but we don't lower the standard. We don't come up with excuses because we want to build our house so it will stand. When we live this way, we're living salty. And what I mean by that is when Jesus starts the Sermon on the Mount, he says, you are the salt of the earth. Not you could be, not you might be. You sh you, if you do this and this, you will be. No, you are. He's depending on us to be the salt. And we think of salt for all kinds of things. We know that at that time it was preserving but here's another thing about salt that I like. In context here, when you have salt and you're the salt of the earth, you know what you do? You get thirsty. You make other people thirsty. When we live this way, when we do what Jesus said, others are going to become thirsty because they want the peace that we will have if we actually do what he says. If we build our house on the rock, then we will then make others thirsty because they're going to look at our life and go, that is solid. I want me some of that. We approach this, this teaching of Jesus, and I think Luke noticed it, and he said, you know what, guys? If you don't, this is what's going to happen. This is what Jesus said. And so I'm going to add a parable. This is a bug parable. This is a bug story. There's two people, and they make cookies. And one person takes these instructions as suggestions, picks and chooses what they want to do. And the other person decides that they're going to follow the instructions as commandments step by step, committed to it. And so when the two finish their cookies, one of them leaves out the sugar. And one of them does not because they followed the instructions all the way through. Have you ever had a cookie that doesn't have sugar in it? I have because I didn't follow the instructions. I didn't keep checking. I wasn't diligent. I just was kind of winging it, going along. Yeah, yeah, I make cookies. And then those cookies were so poor, they had to all be thrown out. That's what it's like for us. We are called to be all in. As someone said, if the Lord isn't the Lord of all, He isn't the Lord at all. This is how we're called to live. And when I finished last week, I felt like I didn't really get that across. I wasn't yelling enough. I think that's what Luke's doing here. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and you don't do what I tell you to do? Because he knows those are words from Jesus, and he wants us to hear that. He wants us to hear that desperation because Jesus loves us, and he wants what's best for us. He doesn't want our cookies to taste like that. He doesn't want our house to be washed away. This is for us. And that's why I want to go back to one more thing he says in the Sermon on the Mount in closing here. In the Sermon on the Mount, he says, don't worry about judging others. You got enough to worry about in your own life. And so when we look at this story where Jesus has a purpose and a plan, he's trying to get something across to us. We can look at this and say, you know, there's a lot of people that aren't building their house on the rock. No, we need to step back and go, am I? That's what this story is for. It's for us and others to step back and ask, do I have a big old plank in my eye? Is there something that needs to be removed? 
I don't have time to look at how everyone else is doing their life. I don't have time to critique them and tell them what they should be doing because I got a plenty on my plate right here in my own life. And if we're going to live these instructions, we need to have the instructions. God's Word. And we need to be pouring through it and to be diligent. That story that I told you about the cookies, I, it makes it sound like I made it up. I didn't make it up because there's been so many times when I've been following a recipe and I got lazy and I wasn't diligent and I missed the ingredient of sugar and it ruined the whole batch. So we have to be diligent. We have to live this out because Jesus is telling this Sermon on the Mount to people that have been following him around. But at the very end, he says, are you following me? Now, I know you're following me around. We're all here on this hill together, and you follow me from here to here and here. But the question is, are you following? Are you a disciple? Are you an apprentice? Are you going to live this as instructions for life? Because I'm giving them to you because I love you. And I don't want you to be washed away. Trust me. So I'll close with Jesus' words from Luke. Why aren't you doing what I say? God bless.